So what we're going to do for this problem is it's very similar again, guys. Um, to help ourselves out, we could do the prime factorization for this, but we could do that for each problem and see what do they share. But another way we can just look at it and say, you know, what are exactly are they sharing, and what is the greatest, what is that greatest number they share, which is called the greatest common factor. <coughs> because remember, if they're not prime, they have factors that will divide into them, right? So we look at this as 12 or 16 prime. No, neither of them are prime. So we know that there's some numbers other than those numbers that go into them. Now what we want to look at is between the factors of these two numbers, what is the largest factor that goes into both of them? Four. And you think about, well, 4. 4 definitely goes into 12. And 4 goes into 16. Good. And yeah, that's the greatest. There's other numbers that go into 16, like 8. But 8 doesn't go into 12, right? So what I can do is I can factor out 4. 4 is a factor of both of those numbers. Everybody agrees? Yep. Okay. So I can factor out a 4. Now remember, when you factor out a 4, what we're doing is like we're really dividing out the 4. Just like I said, if I said 6 and I said, hey, a factor of 6 is 3, well, 6 divided by 3 is going to leave you 2. So you write it as a product of the two factors. So 3 times 2 equals 6. So this is going to be 4 times. Well, what's the result when you divide by 4? Well, let's do it. 12x squared divided by 4 is going to give you, let's just deal with the numbers right now. I'm not going to deal with the x's. It's going to leave you with a 3 and then 16. Let's Again, we're going to the x's. 16 divided by 4 is going to leave you with a positive 4. Okay? Now, let's look at the x's. Okay? Because those are your variables. Are those prime? Is the x squared or x cubed? Is that a prime number? Can we divide anything into those numbers? The same? Well, guys, remember, remember we're looking at it. Remember we talked about this before. If you had a squared, you can divide, you can break that up into a set of two factors. A times A. Those are two factors of A squared, right? Yeah. And that's not the same as A squared, nor is 1. So A squared is factorable into A times A. Well, you can do that with X squared and X cubed. And what you notice is that what's the largest square, what's the largest um, variable that goes into both of them? Well, the largest variable that's going to go into both of them would be X squared. Now you say, but Mr. McGlogan, how does 2 go into 3? Remember, when we're dividing fractions, right? So let's look at it. I know x squared goes into x squared, right? x squared definitely goes into that because um, that equals 1. But how does x cubed divide into x squared? Well, remember, we're not dividing the exponents into each other. What happens when you divide, x, when you divide numbers with exponents? The same base of the exponents. You subtract, you subtract the exponents. All right. So the largest exponent, the largest variable that goes into both of these is x squared. Okay? So I can do 4x squared times 3. Well, if I divide an x squared divided by x squared, that just leaves me 1. And then an x squared, x cubed divided by x squared gives me x to the first power. So therefore, I'm going to write my final answer as 4x squared times 3 plus 4x. All right? And we're not going to write the prime factorization. We're not going to write this all factored out. All we want to do is just factor out the biggest, the greatest common factor between these two terms. And the greatest number was 4, and the greatest variable was x squared. Okay? Sense? Great.